According to Phil Soper, president and CEO of Royal LePage, it's quite clear that Canada's housing market correction is over. And Royal LePage has now revised their forecast for Canadian home prices to reflect that, as the company now predicts that the national aggregate price of a home will increase by 4.5% in the fourth quarter of 2023 compared to the fourth quarter of 2022. So how is this possible and what has changed in the market that has caused Royal LePage to revise their forecasts? That's what we're going to look at in today's video. But before we get into that, I want to know what's happening in the market in your area. Where I'm at in Durham region, we've seen demand pick up recently, but I know it's not like that everywhere. So let me know what's going on near you. My name is Jesse McClellan and I'm a realtor here in Oshawa, Ontario with the Lisa Abbott team. If you'd like to stay up to date on the real estate market, especially what's going on in Durham region and the GTA, then subscribe to our channel. And if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate if you would give it a thumbs up because it does help us reach more people like you. So this article caught my attention recently and I thought it would be great to go over a few points with you guys. I will link it in the description and the comments. So if you'd like to check it out, it'll be there for you, but I'm also going to bring it up here too. After a nearly year long correction, Canada's housing market has begun to find a sense of normalcy. Although it was still down 9.2% from the record high seen a year ago, the aggregate price of a home in Canada rose 2.8% quarter over quarter in Q1 of 2023, to 778,300, according to the latest Royal LePage house price survey. Broken down by housing type, the national median of a detached home increased 3.4% quarter over quarter to 808,700, while the median price of a condo was up 1.8% from Q4 of 2022 to 571,700. Prices were down 10.7% and 6.7% respectively on an annual basis. The jump in prices coincided with the Bank of Canada's decision to pause interest rate hikes, which brought buyers off of the sidelines. According to Royal LePage, home sales have been trending upwards in major markets since the start of the year. This is in line with what we're experiencing in my market, which is Durham region and the surrounding areas. There's definitely been an increase to buyer demand. Prices have started to increase in certain areas and property types, but year over year, we're still down quite a bit from the peak. They go on to mention the increase in transactions between January and March in major markets like Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver, which is to be expected. The market slowing down around December and January and picking up into February and March is pretty normal. Then there's this quote from Phil Soper, which says it's quite clear that the substantial market correction ended sometime in March, about 12 months after it started. And then he says that we're in store for a more normal market going forward. I feel a couple of ways about that. A quarter over quarter increase in home prices is a good sign that we may be past the market correction, but at the same time, this increase was fueled by renewed consumer confidence in the market after the Bank of Canada said they would pause the rate hikes for now, which they have done for two consecutive rate announcements. But the messaging has also been mixed. The Bank of Canada very clearly left it open for the possibility that they will raise interest rates again if inflation does not come down. But it seems like since we've heard about them pausing rate hikes, now we have talk and articles coming out about how rates could even start decreasing at some point this year. And if there's no magical change to supply and rates come down, these major markets are going to see prices increasing quickly again, which is not a normal market in my opinion. Royal LePage has revised its forecast for Canadian home prices. The real estate company is now predicting that the national aggregate price of a home will increase 4.5% in Q4 of 2023 compared to Q4 of 2022. While the forecast has been revised upwards, still high interest rates will keep a lid on prices for the remainder of the year, Soper noted. We'll see how the spring market plays out, but it's hard to keep a lid on prices when we have a lot of demand hitting parts of the market, but we aren't seeing the same increase to new listings coming onto the market. If Offsea chooses to impose harsher mortgage restrictions, it would not only hinder the real estate industry's recovery, but could cause real significant problems for the Canadian economy, he warned. People are frozen in place like deer in the headlights with these high mortgage rates by lowering the stress test and making it easier for people to work with today's mortgage realities. We'd free up more Canadians to trade and we get more product on the market. 
Okay, so when he's talking about OFC here, he's talking about the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, which publishes guidelines that it expects financial institutions to follow and essentially can make changes to how Canadians can qualify for a mortgage. They were considering making changes to the stress test and to the loan to income ratio used to qualify borrowers. Basically, if they made restrictive changes to that, the average buyer would qualify for less when applying for a mortgage. And depending on the changes, we would likely see a similar effect to what happened in 2017 and 2018 when they made changes to the stress test and we saw a small market correction. So it could cause prices to drop, but it doesn't help affordability and it can push people towards B lenders and other forms of lending, which can land people in sticky situations. But that's a topic for another video. The last paragraph though, I don't know if I agree with. Lowering the stress test would make it easier for people to afford today's home prices and it likely would cause transactions to increase and theoretically bring more inventory. But what it also does is increase what buyers can qualify for and makes it a little bit riskier as well. We already know that this isn't the answer. You can't just keep letting buyers qualify for more and more debt and keep kicking the can down the road. Look at what happened in 2021 and early 2022 when interest rates were extremely low and buyers could qualify for more money. Prices skyrocketed. We know this is a supply and demand issue and the only way you're going to have a true lasting impact is to make significant changes to the supply side making it easier to qualify for a mortgage and allowing buyers to afford more, but not bringing more supply onto the market only increases the demand and will cause prices to go wild again. The article ends with Mr. Soper saying, further restricting Canadians access to mortgage financing right now would be a very dangerous move to make economically. He may be right, but I don't think it will work out better to allow Canadians to accumulate even more debt on the same income. I think that's just kicking the can down the road. And unfortunately, some people have already experienced having to face financial pressure or selling their houses because of the increase to the interest rates. It's such a tough topic because you can't let the market collapse because that would financially ruin so many families and people who have done absolutely nothing wrong. But at the same time, we can't just keep putting off the affordability issue either. Honestly, I'm glad I'm not the one making the decisions because there's no easy answer or quick fix. I hope you found this video helpful or interesting. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video and want to stay up to date on the real estate market. Leave me a comment below and let me know what you think is going to happen in the market this year. And as always, if you'd like to speak with me about buying or selling or just to get some questions answered, you can always use the link in the description to book a call with me at a time that works best for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one next week. Bye.